I know you're unhappy. I know you feel sad, you feel down and out, and you feel no one sees you, no one hears you, and nobody cares. But in spite of your issues, in spite of all your problems, in spite of all your difficulties, you are not alone. We all go through dark times. We all have obstacles in the way. Just everything. One thing after another just keeps going wrong. You keep getting knocked down. Setbacks. Things don't work out. But you should remember, this is just life. I know you're going through a really dark time right now, but you've got to believe if you just keep pushing through, if you keep getting back up, and if you keep going, you're going to get through it. There is always light at the end of a tunnel. You have to believe that. But let me tell you now, the dark times are going to come again. There is always going to be dark times ahead. There is always going to be storms on the horizon but you've got to have the strength and the resilience. Don't let life beat you. Do not let life beat you. Because this thing we call life can be the most beautiful thing in the world if you just keep getting back up and keep going. We all go through disappointment, loss, setbacks, but all of those dark times are a part of life. It's easy to get discouraged, even bitter, thinking, why is this happening to me? Why just me? Sometimes we look at pieces in our lives that don't make sense. The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Heartache, loss, disappointment, breakup, rejection. They don't leave us the same. Every painful time, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in those dark times. Eventually, that will pass and you will go through it, but you will be different and you will be grateful for those tough times. Now, how tough times changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter or you can come out better. You can come out defeated and giving up your dreams or you can come out with a new passion and excited about the new opportunities in front of you. Don't complain about the pain. Without the pain and those dark times, we couldn't reach the fullness of our destinies. All of us experience pain and dark times, but my challenge is don't just go through it, but grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get wiser, to develop ourselves, and to get better. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that is doing? Just wasting your pain. That dark time is not to stop you, it's there to prepare you for a brighter future. Difficulties are a part of life and now quit telling yourself you can't take it or do it. You are not weak, you are strong. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Our mind always tries to convince us to settle where we are. Life has a way of pushing our dreams down. They can become buried under discouragement buried under past mistakes. There are dreams buried under divorce and under low self-esteem. It's easy to settle for mediocrity even though we have all this potential buried on the inside. What you are remembering, the hurt, the pain, just turn it around and remember your dreams. How you allowed any dreams to get buried in you, you could easily settle where you are and nobody would fault you. The enemy would love to deceive you into burying your dream, thinking that it's never going to happen. Don't listen to those lies. It's not too late to become all you were created to be. This is your time. This is your moment. Shake off the doubt and negativity. You're at the right time and place. Now all you have to do is get in the right frame of mind. To everyone who is listening or watching right now, you have so much to give, so much to offer, and so much to do. But doing it and setting around waiting for it to happen, it's just going to stay neutral. You have to electrify that desire that you have, that you once had. So the next time when you feel complaining, when you feel worrying, and you are so concerned about other things that don't necessarily concern you, ask yourself, is it making you better? Is it taking you higher? 
are you going further? Or are you just being complacent? Complaining and worrying and doing things that are not better for you. Are you going to realize that maybe just going up the mountain does a little bit more work than just having something handed to you? Are you going to be that person that realized that if and when you get to the top of the mountain, don't just stop there, you gotta figure out another way to go even higher. You have to electrify and get all the things that are necessary within you to start doing the things that you need to do so when the time comes, you can kick down that door and move towards the possibilities of being the best of who you really are. Don't lose yourself and the things that's not going to give you strength and capacity of understanding that you matter for something. Don't lose yourself in fear. Don't lose yourself in doubt. Dare yourself to be better. Dare yourself to be unique. Dare yourself to be the best possibility that the world has yet to see. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. That's the key. You have to believe in something that you can't see. You have to believe when you don't see no way how. You have to buckle down and keep believing. Everything God wants you to have, he puts it in your imagination. Albert Einstein said imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Everything you imagine is God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. And he puts it in your imagination so you can see what he got for you. So if you've been imagining that you're going to be rich one day, it's because God wants you to be rich. Now, when you going to ask him for it and are you going to wait for it to happen? Or are you going to lose faith? I've been wanting to be on TV since I was 10 years old. You know how old I was before I got on TV? 38. 28 years after I wrote it on the paper. I won't be on TV. It took me 28 years to get on TV. But it happened at an appointed time. I just never gave up the faith. I kept going because I ain't know how to quit. Because I know if I quit, it cannot happen. But if you stay with it, if you stay with it, you have no idea what can happen for you. You, you can't quit, man. You got to stay with it. It's somebody having it way harder than you and they didn't give up. Will there be some times that you want to give up? Yes. When you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Never give up then, and that is so important. When you're working on doing the things you want to do and fulfilling your dream, and things happen, there are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. If you've decided that this is what you want to do, you've got to become courageous to stand up within yourself, to face it and step forward. We all face difficulties that don't look like they'll ever change. We don't see any sign of things improving. It's easy to live discouraged and accept that it's not meant to be. What you're up against may look permanent. Seems like it's going to take years to get well, years to meet the right person. Don't be fooled by what you see. Trouble is only temporary. Soon you're going to see the breakthrough. You may not see how this can happen, you're looking at it in the natural. We serve a supernatural God. He can make things happen that you can't make happen. Joel, it's already been a long time. That means you are very close to seeing it turn around. You're about to see freedom, promotion, dreams suddenly come to pass. Soon that new door is going to open. Soon you're going to come into overflow. As long as you think it's going to take years, that's going to stop God from working. When you have this soon mentality, you get up each morning with expectancy. This could be the day that God shows out in your life. God owns it all. One touch of his favor and you'll have more than enough. 
one idea, one contract, and everything will change. Your mind will tell you all the reasons it's not going to happen. The people that you're up against are too powerful. It's been that way too long. Don't believe those lies. The problem will soon be over. The loneliness will soon be gone. These present troubles will not last very long. The scripture says rain falls on the just and the unjust. The rain doesn't discriminate. Don't get discouraged by difficulties. It's just life. It's not that trouble won't come, but the trouble is not going to last. When you're in difficulties, came down with an illness, people at work turned on you. It's easy to live worried. You have to remind yourself it is not permanent. Soon it will resolve. When Job looked at all his circumstances, all that he had lost, he got depressed. One reason he was so discouraged is he saw the trouble as permanent. As long as he had this forever mentality, he felt overwhelmed. When you have a setback, thoughts will tell you it's permanent. You'll never be happy again. If you believe those forever lies, you'll get discouraged and lose your passion. If the trouble was too much, the sickness too great, he wouldn't have allowed it. It's a test. What are you going to do? Give up on dreams, live defeated? Or are you going to believe that God is on the throne? That the trouble is temporary? That it's not going to last long? And at one point, Job changed his attitude. He got up out of the ashes, looked up toward the heavens and said, I know my Redeemer lives. I know this difficulty can't stop my destiny. He shifted to an attitude of faith. God let us see both sides of Job to let us know it's okay to feel things. It's okay to start there, but don't finish there. Don't stay defeated. At some point, you have to do like Job and say, I know my Redeemer lives. I know this problem is not permanent. Lord, thank you that it will soon be over. When you live with this soon mentality, all the forces of darkness cannot keep you down. Job's situation looked permanent, but God not only turned it around, but Job came out with twice what he had before. God never brings you out the same. He makes the enemy pay for bringing the trouble. The entire book of Job is about his struggle. You would think it went on for 40 years, but some commentaries believe the whole struggle was only nine months. What you think is going to take years. Like with Job, it's going to happen sooner than you think. You're about to see his hand bring healing, divine connections, promotion. It's not by your might, but by the spirit of the living God. The sickness, depression, anxiety is not going to stop your destiny. Why don't you get in agreement with God? You may not see how, the sickness too great, the opposition too strong. You're not in this by yourself. The Most High God is fighting for you. Sooner than later, you're going to see the hand of God turning situations around that look impossible. But it's easy to live with this forever mindset. Switch over to a soon mentality. I know some things take time, but God promises us in this verse, soon the trouble will be over. What if I believe and this doesn't happen? What if you believe and it does happen? It probably won't happen if you've already accepted a long time to get well, to meet the right person, to accomplish that dream. I'm asking you to believe for sooner than later, even if it doesn't happen as soon as you like. But I've made up my mind, I'm going to live with the soon mentality. The trouble is temporary. You may be in a difficult time, but that's not how your story ends. That person that walked away, the bad break, the unfair situation is not going to stop your purpose. After the trouble, there's going to be great joy in your life. Don't be discouraged by the trouble. It's not stopping anything God has for you. You're not losing anything. What belongs to you is still coming your way. Your latter days will be better than your former days. Your story doesn't end in defeat. Injustice, sorrow, those are temporary seasons. God has already lined up and after this for you. He said what was meant for your harm, 
he's turning to your advantage. You're about to step in to an advantage. Step into favor that God has already lined up for you. If you'll stay in faith, you're going to come in to your after this. Come back to a place of peace. God is going to get you to your destiny. That cancer is not bigger than our God. That breakup didn't stop your purpose. God is behind the scenes right now working in your life. Your time is coming. It's going to happen sooner than you think. After suffering through a pandemic for a year, many of us felt as if a year of our lives had been wiped clean. In such enduring circumstances, it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that our life's timing is off or forgotten. We must remember that God is still on the throne, and that if we trust Him with our lives and go with His route, follow it, then we will get where we need to be at exactly the correct time. There is an underlying tension that we must have a certain title or rank in the employment by a given age in order to feel on track in life. This stress can be overpowering for many people, but that is when we need to bring God into the picture. God has perfect timing, and we see this timing made fully intentional when we invite Him into every part of our lives for direction. Many positions or jobs will lead to new opportunities, connections with others, or personal improvement, and this is something that should not be overlooked. When you're younger and want to marry, people around you may discourage you because they think you're too immature, but if you're not married by a certain age, those same voices will become bewildered. Consider whether God still has a plan for your life at deliberate timing if you are feeling behind, especially at a time when nearly two birthdays of your life have been overtaken by a pandemic era. Perhaps your future spouse is going through a season that is required for them to grow into the person they will need to be to be a decent companion. Perhaps they're coming out of a poor relationship, or perhaps there are some heart modifications that need to be made. Remember that if we knew everything that God knows, we would agree that waiting was the greatest option at the moment. Another characteristic of our generation is the urge to get everything immediately, or at least extremely soon. When it comes to achieving a goal or desire, it might be disappointing to see how difficult the road ahead appears to be. Consider situations in the Bible where God meticulously planned the specifics of a voyage, such as these. We may not always understand why a God-given desire or objective is taking so long, but there is hope for the future if we rely on the promise giver rather than the current circumstances. Trust, in and of itself, needs faith, which is something we can rarely tangibly hold or see. There are always aspects of a situation that we do not see, comprehend, or have knowledge about, no matter how in control we feel. That is not to defeat us, but to give us the assurance that God is in charge. This does not imply that every minute of the trip will feel hopeful or peaceful, but it does imply that we can abide in His goodness, which does not change. Believe and trust that He is at work in the unseen realm, and that He is trustworthy. When the time comes, God will turn every light green, and open every door exactly when He wants them to. And no power of hell or human scheming will be able to stop Him. It will be because the God who hung the stars in the galaxy declared clearly, it is time. It will not be because of our trying or because we can create our own wonders. Patience becomes less about time and more about trust at this point. The goal of patience is to build trust. Trust that no time spent waiting on the Lord is wasted. 
Rather, each instant counts and has purpose. Our God is a God who provides for you, each and every time. God doesn't come through for you because you've been good or because you deserve it, because that is who God is. God is so gracious to us, and when we begin to trust Him with the little things in life, it strengthens our faith and allows us to trust Him much more in the future. God wants for us to prioritize Him in our lives. He wants us to place our complete faith and trust in Him at all times and in all situations. Even when we don't understand, He wants us to lean on Him. God knows everything, but we don't. We see the world from a limited perspective, but He sees everything. He knows the future and the past, and everything He plans comes to pass. He knows when you're supposed to land your dream job, and He knows when you're meant to marry the perfect guy. You can trust Him, because even if it takes many years, it will come to pass. If God planned it, it is bound to happen. If the truth be told, we were being totally honest. Most of us don't like waiting. Particularly if we're waiting for something to change or something to get better. Waiting can be a very frustrating experience. But the worst kind of waiting of all is waiting on God. When God forces you to wait for things to get better in your life, for things to improve, to change, to reverse, and nothing is happening. And yet, over and over and over again in the Bible, we're told to wait on the Lord. The most difficult place for you to be in life is in God's waiting room in God's waiting room some of you are in God's waiting room right now what is God's waiting room when you're in a hurry for something to happen and God isn't that's God's waiting room some of you are in a hurry to graduate some of you are in a hurry to get married some of you are in a hurry to start a family. Some of you are in a hurry to launch a new business, to, to, to close a big deal. Some of you are in a hurry for a big goal, a big dream, a big accomplishment. Some of you are in a hurry for all kinds of, of different things, and God isn't. And one reason we get in a hurry is we think we're falling behind. Our friend is getting married. Our coworker got promoted. The neighbors moved into a new house. We got to make things happen. We're being left out. Well, here's the key. What has your name on it will not go to anyone else. We don't like to trust somebody else's timing. Why? Because we lose control. And so we'd rather than trust God because trusting God means, my goodness, I actually have to trust God, we'd rather go, listen, I like the plan and purpose you have for my life, but can we do it my way? And here's the funny thing. Now that I'm a parent, I recognize in my children that they don't like it to wait on my timing. They don't like to wait. They don't like to chill and be patient. But the thing is, if they would just trust my timing, they would recognize it's for their good it's for them to be blessed and prosperous and so you can live life frustrated anxious stressed out angry or you can rest and go God I have to trust in your timing another thing you have to learn in life is that a delay is not a denial 
There's a big difference between no and not yet. Now, immature children don't know the difference. You tell a kid, not yet, they start crying and having a hissy fit because they think it means no. They don't understand a delay is not a denial. We all have things that we're waiting for, problem to turn around. When it's taking longer than we thought, it's easy to get discouraged, to become impatient, but sometimes it's not happening because we're not prepared for what God has prepared. You need more time to grow, to develop, to gain experience. Patience is developed in the weight room. Before you see what God promised, God will send you to the weight room. You may not like it. Other people are in the game, making progress. You're stuck waiting. You may not see anything changing, but something is happening. Patience is working. You're growing, developing, getting you prepared so you can sustain what God has coming. Don't get discouraged because it's not happening as fast as you would like. When he knows you're ready, what you give birth to is going to be much bigger than you've imagined. Maybe you've been praying, being your best, but you don't see anything changing. Have a new perspective. You're in the weight room. You're not falling behind. God has you right where he wants you. Now do your part and wait with a good attitude. Thank you that what you promised is on the way. If you will wait with the right attitude after patience has done its work, you're going to see promises come to pass. Don't allow a moment of agony to make you draw a conclusion about life prematurely. Because if you just keep on walking with God, God has a way of making everything all right. But he warns us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, the term steps implies process. It means it's gonna take a while because a blessing given too soon is not a blessing at all. I can give my son the car keys now, but had I given it to him when he was five, it would not have been a blessing at all. He can't handle it. So would I be a good father if I gave him a good thing too soon? Sometimes my goodness is proven by my ability to say not yet. You see, while you're working on your project, your goal, your dream, your vision, God's working on you. And God's much more interested in you than in what you're trying to accomplish. Because you're not taking your accomplishments to he heaven, but you are taking your character. And sometimes God says, yeah, I intend to give you what I've promised you. I intend to answer that prayer. I intend to fulfill the vision, but you're not ready yet. I want you to grow. And when you're ready, then it's gonna happen. And I'll admit, I don't like to wait. I like to make progress. I like to get things done. But I've learned some things take time. So much is developed in the process. When you're doing the right thing, but nothing's changing. Remember, something is happening. You're growing. You may not like it, but you can't bypass the process. David said, God, my times are in your hands. I not only trust your ways, but I trust your timing. When I'm ready, when I can handle it, you will take me to new levels of my destiny. Something may have your name on it. You know God has put it in your heart. But if it happens too soon, the blessing will become a burden. Sometimes God proves his love to us by what he's not letting us have. We just have to spend more time in the weight room, growing, learning to trust God, learning to keep a good attitude when things aren't going our way. 
The sooner we pass these tests, the sooner God will release what belongs to us. You can never lose faith. When you don't see no way how, you have to buckle down and keep believing. God is always coming. The moment you ask God for something, he boxes it up and he ships it to you. It's going to come. He just don't tell you when. But he don't tell you when the package is going to arrive. So here's the deal. He wants you to stay in faith to receive the package. Because he only delivers to Faith Street. That's how it works, man. Let me tell y'all something. Being successful is not a magic trick. You just have to learn the principles of success. I am telling you, your education ain't got nothing to do with it. Now, when you gonna ask him for it and are you gonna wait for it to happen? Or are you gonna lose faith? Well, I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. How you know what God's will is? It all happens at an appointed time, but you have to stay in faith for the appointed time to happen for you. Listen to me. Talk to God often. often. Even if you're not perfect, just talk to him every day. You don't have to be in the same faith I'm in or you ain't got to call God the same thing I call him. But listen to me, you do have to call him though. It's not going to make your life easy. I made a t-shirt one time that said, faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. All you want is the strength to get through your life. You know, I've been going through a lot lately. Somebody sent me a plaque. You know what it said? It said, on the days that I feel like I'm not going to make it, on the days that it feels like I can't endure anymore, I think back on my track record for surviving all my bad days. And so far, surviving all my bad days, my track record is 100%. That's pretty good. Now I have some tough moments. So where I started from was my father making $5 a day. I come from nothing. I had a severe stuttering problem throughout school. I flunked out of school. I'm on my third marriage. I lost everything I ever owned twice. I've been homeless and lived in a car for three years. It ain't about the money. I know a lot of very, very rich people that's miserable. Not happy at all. I can bet you most of you are happier than most of the people I know. And I know some very, very wealthy people. And money don't make you happy. It helps you through a lot of situations. You know the only thing about money? Money takes all emergencies and turns them into mere inconveniences. That's what money does. Really, other than that, it's it's a lot to come with money. But if that's your desire to get more of it, you got to ask God for it. If you want to be happy or successful, you got to ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. The scripture says you have not because you ask not. It's a very simple scripture, but listen to me. If you up your ask, he will up his gill. If you change what you ask God for, he immediately changes what he gives to you. It's a scripture that's available for everybody. It's not just for rich people. When you jump, your parachute not going to open right away. The problem with jumping is every successful person I know has jumped. When you jump, it allows your parachute to open and you to sail through life within your gift. But when you first jump, your parachute don't open right away. That ain't how it works. If it opened right away, everybody would jump. When you first jump, you're in an uncontrollable fall. It's almost like you're spinning out of control. But you got to stay with the jump because eventually God will put the necessary air up under your parachute and you'll be in the air like you're supposed to. But you're just going through the process. Like I tell my kids all the time, it take a long time to make a lot of money. See, my kids look at me and they be talking about, well, Dad, you didn't, you ain't got no, no degree. You didn't finish school. Why I got to go to school? Well, 
first of all, you don't have no jokes. Let's let's start there. And my kids don't understand the process. See that they just see me now. They didn't know I flunked out of school. They they don't care nothing about the third marriage I'm on. They don't know that I lost everything twice. They don't, they wasn't around when I was homeless and I lived in the car for three years. They didn't see the process. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just got to quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're going to see exactly why it went that way. And you're going to be okay with it. But quit tripping during the process. Oh, Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh, Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh, Lord, why I lose my job? You ain't the only one unemployed. Oh, Lord, why he leave me? You ain't the first chick got left. This might, this might not even be your last time getting left. Pull yourself together and quit tripping because you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. Everything is wrong. First of all, let me tell you this right here. Why are you tripping? I look back on my life at all that I've been through. So the stuff I'm currently going through, I have built up enough reservoir that living in the car taught me that this ain't it. So the things I'm going through now, I know this ain't it. That he gonna come get me in a minute. So all I gotta do is sit tight. I ain't in a bad place. Now I ain't where I wanna be, but. The spot I'm in is better than where I was. I ain't homeless. So what I'm going through right now, y'all don't know, I got some challenges. I don't, don't you, you, people think when you get famous or rich that your problems is over. Oh, they got a whole new set of them for you. They got some stuff you ain't seen. Biggie wrote a song, said one time, more, more, more money, more problems. I, I got to tell you something, that boy wasn't never lying. But I'll tell you the truth right now. The problems I got right now, I take them. Because the problems I had when I was homeless, I don't want them no more. See, m money, money going to change your life a little bit, folks. All of you going to get more. What most people do is they give up before God give you the gift. See, when you ask God for something, he box it up and he ships it immediately. But you have to remain on Faith Street in order to receive the gift. The problem is when God box up the gift and he ship it to you, he never gives you the date that the package is going to arrive. He'll never tell you that. Most people move off Faith Street before the package get there. You can't move over on the I Doubted Boulevard. He don't ship packages to I Doubted Boulevard. He only ship packages to Faith Street. You can't get over there on I Don't See How Circle. He don't ship nothing to I Don't See How Circle. So when you move out of faith, the package got to go back to sender. That's what happened. So you have to stay. You have to stay in the process and complete the fall. You're going to get cut up on the rocks. You're going to get your skin toe up. You're going to lose loved ones along the way. You're going to lose friendships along the way. You're going to might lose your car, your job along the way. You might lose your house. But trust and believe that God got you. Name, name one time he ain't ever had you. See, here the problem with Christians, you sit them, you say you're a Christian, name one time God ever let you down. Just name one time. Name it. Name one situation he didn't bring you through. If he ain't bring you through it, he currently bringing you through it now. You know how I know that? Because you're sitting in here. Amen. Do you know if you had to have an education to be successful, you know how many people wouldn't be successful? Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, two of the richest men in America, ain't neither one of them got a degree of any kind. 
but they have more degrees working for them than a thermometer. You don't need an education to be successful. I don't, I flunked out of school. What God has for you, quit tying it in education. People kill me. I know people got two degrees finna go back to school and get another one. If you got two of them that ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? That's crazy to me. That's I know people that's mastered and PhD though. Ain't even working. You don't need that. I'm telling you, man, your whole Success is tied in your relationship to God. You can simplify this by getting in touch with your creator. That's your key, man. Quit tripping yourself out. Hey, y'all, don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. And don't ever be too proud to pray because prayer, prayer changes things.